Guys, what's up? 12 weeks in to this fat loss diet, Michigan got cold. About to get a second DEXA, see how we did, get the little body fat going. Maybe the machine can see inside me. Oh, yeah, that's what it does. Let's get naked. Hi, puppy. Hi, <laughs> Scott, what was your guess first? I'll go nine, three. Okay, I go nine, one. I go eight, because I betted a whole Diet Coke on this. It's saying 14. Fuck you. I'm serious. <laughs> what? <laughs> no way. You're fat. He's what the I have striated glutes. Dude, I don't even have any fat on the scan. Like, No, you don't. But it's 14. Right. Does the thing just like zonk out? I don't know. 235 okay. down to 213. Yeah. And I lost one and a half percent body fat. We're gonna go try to get a DEX at another place within the next few days, because there's plenty of DEXs in the Metro Detroit area. And we'll see how that compares. So that's uh, maybe gonna be a, a cool little flip to be like, hey, like, if you get a DEXA, is that the end? No, get 10 DEXs in a row. Screw radiation that's a myth propagated by lizard people and uh, just get the best one that you can on a random sample of all those and scream at the top of your lungs that you never got 10 DEXs, get the best one and talk about it a lot. Let's go get another DEX. I mean, you don't have a lot of fat. You got you at 14.4%. Your leanest DEX I've, I've ever had. Are DEXs possibly wrong in some cases by 10 or 7 or 6%? Let's make sense of what the hell could be going on here with our DEXA mystery. Scott and I walked out of that building in like low key shock, you know, like the grenade goes off thing in like Saving Private Ryan, where you're just kind of trying to figure out what's going on. There's that like beeping hum in the background. I had glute striations from the side and veins in my abs. And uh, apparently I was just like the average healthy young male body fat nowadays. What the hell was going on? We needed answers. And so we went and got another DEXA. This time the DEXA was on a different brand of machine. And I always get really sensical readings off of it. Um, unfortunately, the place was pretty booked up when we tried. So the earliest we could get in there was about three weeks later from November 19th, it was December 12th. And I dieted as hard as ever in those three weeks, which complicates things because it's gonna move the needle a little bit, right? I got even more veins, more details, more leanness. And at this time I was in even more gear. So I was on about 750 milligrams worth of androgen load. So I added like 50 migs. And actually for some of that time, a few days here and they ate at maintenance for a short time. And so because of the extra gear and the inclusion of a little bit of maintenance, um, my body weight was higher. So this DEXA had me at 222 pounds of total weight and exactly 6.00% body fat, which yields about 13.3 pounds of total fat on my body and about 208.7 pounds of lean mass. What a sigh of relief that was. The numbers matched the look, but not just the look. Why this DEXA that we got made even more sense to us. First of all, I looked the part. Veins, striations, no globs of fat anywhere. Definitely way leaner than 10%-ish look. And if you want to see what that look and other looks look like, I have absolutely, Scott, can we put in the Jeff Nippard video where he talks about all the different body fat people? Phenomenal video. It's absolutely worth 20 minutes of your time to watch. So you just get the vibe for like roughly what visuals we're talking about at roughly what body fat percents. And if you throw my dumb ass in there with a couple of pics that you'll see of me in this video, it's just unlikely you're going to throw me in the 14% area. Like I wouldn't throw myself in there. Look, maybe it's not 6%, but sure, shit, not over 10, man. That's kind of wild. At the same time that I lost a bunch of this fat and weight and got into much, much better shape, I got loads stronger. And uh, like getting loads stronger is a big deal for predicting muscle mass gain and loss, which I'll talk about very extensively towards the end of this video. My body weight fell a ton. Uh, you'd expect some serious fat loss from 235 pounds to 222 pounds. And my gear ramped during this time, which typically raises your body weight. And so if the lean tissue is up from the gear and the body weight still fell by like more than 10 pounds, 13 pounds, you would expect like lots and lots of fat loss. And that's what this DEXA confirmed. Not magic or crazy, it just told you what's probably gonna happen. 
And I have multiple other DEXAs over my various uh, last five years of my bodybuilding career from multiple other locations around the country and in similar shape visually and giving me similar numbers. Like I've been anywhere from the very high fives to the low eights uh, percentages in a similar-ish look to this numerous times. All those were concordant. And then these two DEXAs on the same brand of machine during the roughly the same time were just way, way, way out of line. And another way to ask the question is this. In the time between my November 15th DEXA at that second place, and the December 12th DEXA, did I lose 17 pounds of fat and gain 28 pounds of lean mass in about three weeks of dieting? Scott, how many programs, even though we don't sell programs, how many RP money things would we be able to sell if we made a video like that? Like, uh, and actually claim that shit. 17 pounds of fat, 28 pounds of muscle in, in three weeks. My God, my God, I wish you guys, I wish that had happened. Or there is something amiss about the DEXA scan. And look, let's red team this. Maybe I'm not 6% fat for sure. But if I'm over 10 and check out this leg pick here and veins everywhere and check out this pick with veins in my abs and shit like that. If that's over 10%, if that's over 12%, guys, if that's 14%, then our understanding of body fat is just totally out of touch with reality and other methods that have been cross-compared to the DEXA, MRI, underwater weighing, bod pod, cadaver dissection, where they literally throw cadavers into the machine, into the DEXA, and then they take them out, and then they cut all of them up and weigh their fat and muscle respectively, simply do not align at all with what we would understand if I was 14% fat. That's nuts. Look, it might be true. We have to consider that as scientifically-minded folks. But the most likely hypothesis, in my view, is that at the time of those November DEXs, the formulas for their machines, uh, the formulas used to calculate the body fat percentages in those machines were simply incorrect and by a wide margin. Here's the other thing. It's not just that this DEXA machine makes me look fat and I hate it and I'm really fat. Because you think about it, after detraining, and here's the pictures of what I looked like when I had that other DEXA right around there, you would think like a ton of training and a ton of dieting and a ton of gear uh, this for basically six months would have to do more than a percent and a half change in body fat. Like there's, cause there's ways to be like, nah, Israel, shut up. You just don't like that you're a fat piece of shit. But, 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 but I, how was I like about the same fat <laughs> when I looked like that versus when I looked like this? That's what is fundamentally the big problem. It's not that one Dexa got me a nice result that I like and the other Dexa got me a mean result that I hated. It's that the, the one series of Dexa machines is getting results with the first interval at May 13th, they're like perfectly sensical and then perfectly nonsensical given what had happened and how the transformation looked. So here's the real question and a little bit of instruction for you guys or maybe some help in how to process this. How do you know if your result on a DEXA scan is possibly a major error or closer to the money? Like the next time you get a DEXA, will it be close to reality or a total sham? Let me give you a few point guide as to how to make sense of your own DEXA readings and sanity test your own DEXAs. These also apply really well to every other kind of body fat composition, body composition modality, bod pod, BIA, skin folds, the whole thing. First, I would recommend getting a DEXA if you're interested in this kind of thing yearly on the same machine at the end or beginning of the same kind of diet phase. So like at the end of a fat loss phase or the beginning of a muscle gain phase, different phases of different body water shifts. So same time, same phase, really good yearly. It's great for monitoring overall body composition any more than like once a year. I don't know what you're looking for exactly, uh, especially unless you're doing really big cuts or really big masses. It keeps track of your body comp, keeps track of your bone density, gives you a solid steady baseline from which to detect funky business. Because if you've had like four years of DEXAs at like very similar body compositions at the beginning of a mass, like getting better over time, but you know, by a few pounds here and there, and then you get a DEXA that says like, you're a 3% fat, where all the other ones were like seven, it, like it, it, you could be 3%, you really have to look the part and it seems to be off. So a steady baseline is really good. And it can give you, because DEXA is super accurate, typically, typically gives you a good baseline for BIA, like the electric thing. If it has you 5% higher than a DEXA consistently, then you just add 5% to what your real body fat is. Really, really good to have that baseline. You can figure out what software updates are wrong, that whole thing. Number two, look up charts 
graphics. These are available in tons of textbooks and uh, all over the internet. And Jeff Nippert has an amazing video, again, link here somewhere, to how people typically look at different body fat levels. And it's different from person to person, but it's not that different in most cases. Scott, can you imagine using me at 14%, at 15% when I was there, and then me again at 15% when I had abs and veins and shit like that? Be like, same. Yeah. Like, what? which one of these is 15%? Like, yeah, both, I guess. So if you look way too lean or way not lean enough from your DEXA recent body fat test compared to how these people look, you can reduce your confidence in that test. And if you look about like how you should, then your confidence can increase. So remember, confidence is a relative thing. The DEX is not giving over the exact truth, but if it's way off, it's gonna look way off. Here's a huge one, probably the most important one. Monitor your weight training rep strength on all exercises. The RPI Hypertrophy app, link in description, <laughs> uh, does this automatically for you lift by lift for years of your using it. But you can do this alone, no problem. Rep strength on lifts. Once you are past the first few years of lifting, especially, and you're using similar lifts regularly, squats, you know, hack squats and bench presses and rows and pull-ups, similar styles of lifting with good technique, your rep strength on these lifts becomes a very good proxy for muscle size. Like if you gained five repetitions at a certain weight of uh, some exercises or 25 pounds of average weight with the same reps on most of your lifts for a muscle group, let's say legs or chest or something over the past half a year, the chances that you gained muscle are very good because where the hell are you supposed to get strength from if not muscle gain once your nervous system is pretty damn well adapted to all these exercises? And remember, it's a bunch of different exercises. Your nervous system typically adapts for one exercise at a time. If your hack squat and leg press and barbell squat went up all by 25 pounds, man, and you're not, have you've been training for more than a few years, yo, like you probably gain muscle. That's just how that happens. Muscle is the literal seat of contractile tissue. It's where the force generation comes from. If you want to generate more tension, gaining muscle is probably a thing. And so when you're able to generate way more tension across all the rep ranges, across all of your exercises, you probably gain muscle. There's just no way around that. The chances that you lost muscle if you gained all that strength are very, very remote. If you maintained or slightly gained strength, you probably have about the same muscle mass. Another real big insight to take. If you lose repetition strength, and even when you car back up and drop a week of fatigue, your numbers are still down substantially from half a year ago in a given muscle groups like typical exercises, and most of them are all of them, you almost certainly lost muscle. That's the bad news, right? Scott, you ever see people like, yeah, my lifts are down, but I kind of don't, don't feel smaller. You're like, no. The good news, bad news, if you weren't smaller, you would have the same cross-sectional area and you would be able to lift the same amount of, uh, of reps and or weight. And so you can use this situation, this idea that rep strength corresponds incredibly well to muscle as a second guess for at least the muscle part of the DEXA. And if that's really off, DEXA, any other kind of test, you can be less confident that that test really reveals something. So if the body fat test you got, for example, says you gain 10 pounds of muscle, but you're no stronger for reps, yeah, you probably didn't gain that might have gained a few pounds maybe, and then still you'd probably be stronger for reps. If the body fat test, on the other hand, says you lost 10 pounds of muscle, like mine did, and more, I'll say at some point, Scott, it's easy to interpret me as losing 20 pounds of muscle during that time. Eh. 20 pounds of lean tissue, we'll say get 10 pounds of muscle or something, that's really intense. Um, but your lifts across the board look like you're on super serum compared to six months ago, ahem, which is what happened to me, poor little old me, then man, that test is much more likely to be wrong because you, you kind of just can't fool your actual ability to lift, especially because for more advanced lifters, neural nervous system adaptations are mostly lift specific. Like you get really, really good at squats. If you do squats, you go to hack squats. And if you didn't gain any muscle, hack squats are going to be about as hard as they ever were. And then over several weeks, several months, you're going to get pretty good at those because the nervous system retrains. But if you've been doing a bunch of squats and within a few weeks of going back to hack squats, you're hitting mega PRs again, where the fuck do you think that's coming from? You gained muscle doing those squats. And then that's going to be a leg press effect and a lunge effect and a leg extension effect and all across the board. And uh, that's why rep strength really mirrors over a long period of time, the actual amount of muscle that you're gaining. So no, 
don't abandon the DAXA as a tool. But if it's giving you totally wacky readings, remember that DAXAs do not directly assess muscle and fat and bone and lean mass for that matter. They infer it through radiological data, x-ray returns coming back in, pass through a series of technically secret, because that's how the companies make their money, proprietary algorithms that are quite complex. And those algorithms, and sometimes they get it wrong or they push a software bug and shit happens. And when that happens, don't go thinking you gained 17 pounds of muscle even though your rep strength didn't budge or that you lost 20 pounds of muscle even though you're strongest you've ever been and 50 times stronger than you were just six months ago. Stay grounded, stay sane, look at all of the readings with a grain of salt. All of the readings with a grain of salt. <laughs> Except for my 6% decks of you guys, because that was real. It has to be real. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we going to do about this? Well, Scott and I are going to embark on a little journey to kind of shed a little light on this mystery and ask the question of like, are DEXs possibly wrong in some cases by 10 or 7 or 6%? We are going to get into other body fat composition devices. Let's go on a journey and figure out what the hell is going on or if I'm really just really, really fat. <laughs>